Hello everyone, it's Spawnpoint, and today we're getting hands-on with the PlayStation 5's brand new DualSense Edge Controller. It's got adjustable triggers, mappable back buttons, swappable thumbsticks, and some awesome software features that I will cover today. Now, this is the first ever official high-performance controller from PlayStation, and it has instantly become my favourite controller to use. And I just wanted to say a massive thank you to PlayStation for sending this out to me so I could make today's video, although all opinions are of course my own. So firstly, everything comes neatly packed inside this hard shell carry case, which immediately feels premium. There's the PlayStation logo on the top, which is a nice touch, along with the little icons on the bottom and the zips as well. Inside, as you can see, we have the new controller along with all of the accessories. These include two additional pairs of thumbstick caps, that's two high dome and two low dome, along with the standard caps that are on the controller already. There are also two sets of back buttons, including the half dome and the two levers, which I will demonstrate in a minute. Then there's a 2.8 meter braided USB cable, which feels great. It's got a USB-C on one end to connect to the controller and a USB-A on the other. We also have a connector housing, which is used for locking the cable into the controller. Also, if you want to, you can actually charge your controller while it's in the case. All you need to do is remove the little Velcro padding on the back, feed the USB-C cable through, and you're good to go. And here are all of the accessories that we get with the DualSense Edge controller, which I think looks pretty impressive. There are loads of options here and replacement parts if you need them. Okay, so first impressions on the design and the overall look of this controller, it looks and feels great. It obviously looks very similar to what we've seen already for the PlayStation 5, but it does feel heavier than I was expecting, not by much, but it is certainly not lighter. Overall, it's white with some nice black details like the buttons. These are all black now, which contrasts nicely against the white controller. And the touchpad across the top is now black rather than white. And if you look really closely, you'll notice it has these tiny little PlayStation symbols embedded into it. And these look awesome. Now you will have noticed this already, but the bottom part here is now glossy rather than matte. So I can see this picking up fingerprints and scratches quite easily. Although I do like how the shape has changed very slightly. Then underneath this, we now have two FN or function keys. And these are used to customize your buttons and profiles, which I will cover more on later. But around the back is where we see even more changes. So the rear now has an enhanced slip resistant grip, which feels more grippy and rubbery than before, which means it's less likely to slip out of your hand while gaming. And holding it, it definitely feels more comfortable in the hand. It also has these tiny PlayStation icons printed into the grip. Then we have two big features on the back here. We've got the two holes for the RB and LB mappable buttons and the trigger stops across the top. So for me, these are one of the biggest advantages of owning a pro controller like this. Being able to change the trigger lengths of each trigger can completely change the way that you play certain games. So by default, the triggers across the top act in the same way as you would expect. There's the full range of travel here and they are adaptive. Oh, and I also really like the little PlayStation icons that are now on the grip. These look and feel great. But when you're playing games like Call of Duty Warzone 2, having an even faster response for pulling the trigger or aiming down sight could be the difference between winning or losing that one-on-one. -on -one. So if you flip the controller around and flick the trigger stops on the back, it will change the length of travel, in turn meaning the triggers will fire a lot quicker. It's not a mouse-like click, it's maybe a third of the normal distance, but it makes a noticeable difference when you're playing and you can feel the shorter clicks, it's near instant. And the fact that there are three different lengths here to choose from means that you can find the perfect balance between instant and adaptive for each trigger, so you're not locked into just having one type of controller. You can flick it back to normal and use it for racing in Gran Turismo 7 and take advantage of the full range. Now these do have adaptive triggers built in so you're not losing that feature. However, once you flick them down, it will automatically disable that feature, which makes sense as you're not really going to feel it anyway. And then we have the mappable back buttons, and these are a game changer for almost any game that you play. So on the back there are these two holes labelled RB and LB, which are designed to be used as extra buttons for the controller. Now it comes with two sets of buttons, we have the half dome and the lever style, and both of these are metal and they feel quite nice. And all you need to do is push them into the holes as labelled, and you've now got yourself some extra buttons at your fingertips. So for me, while playing Call of Duty Warzone 2, instead of moving my thumb away from the thumbstick to press jump, I have mapped one of the rear buttons to act as the cross button. That means I can keep aiming or running while I jump, and it makes a massive difference when playing online. But the fact there are two buttons back here, it will let you map any of the other buttons you would typically need at your fingertips. This could include crouching, marking up enemies, or even reloading. And the same goes for other games too, like Gran Turismo 7, where one of the rear buttons could be your handbrake. And the same goes for any game that you play, including The Last of Us Part 1 or God of War Ragnarok. So as mentioned, it comes with two different styles of buttons. I've tried using both, but personally, I prefer the feel of the lever back buttons over the dome. They feel more natural to hold, but the fact that you have a choice of both is great. The dome ones feel less likely to be knocked by mistake though, so some might prefer those instead. 
And as for the placement of the buttons and comfort, well these are the best that I've used. It feels low profile and the position of where the actual buttons are feel ideal for my fingers. Oh and mapping the buttons is really easy, it can all be done via the PS5's on screen settings. But first you need to create and save a profile to edit them. To get set up for the first time just plug the controller into your PS5 using the provided USB cable. And the first time you plug it in you will see a quick start guide that goes through the controller settings and features. You can tab through the screens or you can come back to it later. Now you might have noticed these already, but there are two little buttons sticking out the bottom of the controller, and these are called FN or function buttons. By pressing these and tapping another button on the controller, it gives those buttons a multi-purpose. So if we press and hold the function key, you'll see that these four icons can be mapped to four different profiles. Then the up and down buttons will also control the headphone volume while the left and right controls the game or the chat audio balance. Now if you press and hold the function key and the option buttons together, you'll see the custom profile screen. From here you can create three custom profiles which can be saved onto the controller. For me I've got one for Warzone, Modern Warfare 2 and God of War Ragnarok. And what's great is you can rename them to whatever you need. And once you've created a new profile, you can go ahead and customise the button assignments, stick sensitivity, trigger dead zone, vibration and trigger effect intensities. All of these will then be saved onto that custom profile that you've created. So if we look at the back buttons first, you can assign almost any button to each side. That includes the icons, arrows, and even the triggers across the top. So for me, I would use cross and circle for Call of Duty Warzone 2. But not only that, you can change any default button to another. So if you wanted the R1 and L1 buttons to be flipped, well you can do that. Or the circle and the square to be different, again you can swap that within this area. You can also disable buttons from working entirely. This, for me, is an awesome feature, being able to map a button to another or switching it off entirely. Now, the only buttons that you cannot remap are the touchpad, PlayStation, options, and create buttons. You can disable them, but not remap them. Then once your profiles are set up and saved, well you can assign them to the three remaining icon buttons on the controller. Swapping to the profiles is ridiculously easy as well. Just press the function key along with the icon that you've mapped it to and voila, you're now using a totally different profile with those map buttons. To return to the default non-customized profile, just select the function key and triangle. Now as mentioned, you can save up to 3 custom profiles on the controller, but you can create up to 30 profiles on the PS5 itself per user. Then when you're ready to, you can transfer them back onto the controller when you need them, and these will show up under the unassigned profiles. Right, so these thumbsticks look normal, right? Well, the good news is they feel normal, but the great news is, is they are fully customizable. So firstly, the stick caps themselves are changeable. In total, there are three pairs included. We have the standard ones that we're all used to, as well as two high dome and two low dome. To swap them out, you just need to pull them off and away from the controller, then grab one of the new ones, line it up and push it back on, and it'll click once it's in place. Now, personally, I like to play with the right stick slightly higher than the left, which helps with ADS joint FPS games. But what's great is you you can choose a combination of any of these caps that best fit your needs. Then in the settings you can change the sensitivity of the sticks, so you'll have full control over the dead zone, sensitivity curve and the curve adjustment. This again is all accessed by pressing the function key and the option key. Then you select the profile you wish to edit, and as you're adjusting it you can move the sticks to fill the changes that you're making, so it's instant feedback so you can fine tune it as you go. There are a handful of default profiles here to choose from, but of course you can choose that and then edit to your own style. Then you can tweak the trigger dead zone which essentially reduces the input range and you can reduce and even switch off the vibration intensity and the trigger intensity. To get back into the settings area you can either press the function and the options buttons together or you can go into the PlayStation 5 settings area and then under accessories you will see the DualSense Edge controller is listed on the side. Now another new feature that we've seen added is the fact that the stick modules are now replaceable. So if you flick this little release button on the back of the controller, that glossy front plate now pops off. Then underneath it, it reveals the two modules. All you need to do is lift this lever up on each side and you can remove the entire module. And then when you're ready to, you just slide the new module back in and pull the lever down to lock it into place. Pop the front cover back on and you've just replaced the thumbstick module. And PlayStation are selling these for about $20 or £20, so should you ever need to replace it, well you can do it yourself. So I mentioned at the start that it comes with a braided USB cable, and it measures 2.8 meters in length. Now not only does it feel nice and premium, it also comes with a lockable connector for the controller. So this is designed for those that are using their controller wired instead of wireless. And although the USB-C port is probably tight enough for most that it won't fall out while gaming, this little lockable connector will keep it locked onto the controller. I mean it's pretty extreme for most, but the fact is you can charge and play while making sure the controller won't disconnect. It's probably more suited towards anyone who's playing competitively. 
Okay, and the battery is something else worth covering. Now, although PlayStation haven't mentioned how long the battery should last, at least I couldn't find this information on their website, I have managed to get around eight to 10 hours out of it before needing to charge. This will depend on how you play and the various options and settings that you use, but it's not great for a new controller. Ideally, I would like to have seen a better or improved battery over the previous, so maybe 15 to 20 hours. But saying that, with this super long USB cable that we get, I can charge it from almost anywhere in my house, or at least sitting on the sofa. On top of that, it does fit in the original DualSense charging station, so if you've got one of these already, it will work no problem. Now, even with all of these awesome features included, we still get all of the usual features that we've been using over the last two years. That includes haptic feedback, adaptive triggers, a built-in mic, headphone jack, and motion controls. So we're not losing any of these features while still gaining the new ones. But what are my overall thoughts on the new DualSense Edge controller? Well, I like it. It feels like a nice step up from what I've used before. It feels weighty, premium, and includes loads of game-changing features. The glossy panel and the short battery could be the only real concern here, but this has legitimately become my favourite controller for FPS games. And as for the price, well it launches on the 26th of January on PlayStation's website, and it comes in at £209.99 or $199.99, and then it will be available at participating retailers from the 23rd of Feb. So it's not cheap by any means, but you are getting all of these awesome features that can literally change the way that you play certain games. Plus don't forget, you will get a 12 month warranty, so if you want to grab one of these today, you'll need to head over to PlayStation's website which I have linked to below. Now let me know if you'll be picking up one of these controllers and drop a PS5 Pro in the comments and I'll give you a thumbs up for staying right till the end. And if you did enjoy today's video, check out my best PS5 games to play video next as it covers my top 10 games that you can play right now. Thanks for watching, please like, sub and follow me on Instagram and Twitter. Until next time.